welcome to another trip report. This time from Oslo Airport to Oslo. I did not take a plane to here. Um, however, there's something why I want to make a trip report on this, because this is the fastest train in Norway. I personally don't fly uh, that often, at least especially not within Europe. Um, and I'm quite disappointed to see at the departure screen that is right behind me that there are so many domestic flights and also flights to destinations where you would have lots of alternatives. So if you want to know more about that, at the end of the video I'll tell you a little bit more about opportunities to travel to Norway without flying. Of course, I understand that sometimes you just need to take a plane. Um, for now, I hope you like this video. If you do so, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more trip reports, hit the subscribe button. This channel is mainly focusing on long distance and international train traveling and where trains are not an option, buses and ferry traveling. Mainly to show you what it's like to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation. But for now, let's roll the intro. If you're traveling with Eurail or Interrail, like what I did for this journey, if you want to take the special flight target, these are the special airport express trains, you cannot use those trains if you're traveling with one of the Eurail or Interrail passes. However, you can travel with the regular trains, and for those trains, if you buy separate tickets, the prices are way lower as well. I'll get back to that in a bit. Over here, I'm at the departure area, and I think if you take this train, you probably are at the arrivals area. So let's move there. The railway station is really good integrated within the airport. As a matter of fact, this is basically a through line. Also, trains that will go up north to, for example, Trondheim, do call here. The different railway companies, basically the railway companies you find all over Norway with or V, SJ and Go Ahead Nordic and Flytoget, what is a special airport express train, do have different ticket counters but also vending machines for the trains. The special Flytoget airport express trains are much more obvious and marketing wise they are just really good. The special airport express trains do depart from track number 2 and 3, well basically arrive and depart from platform 2 and 3. Children travel for free, but that's no exception for the flight target. The flight target airport express does have two lines, fly 1 and fly 2. Fly 1 terminates in Drammen and also makes an extra stop between the airport and Oslo Central Station and Flight 2 will go non-stop to Oslo Central Station from the airport and some of these trains do terminate a little bit further than Oslo Central Station as well. This is a network map of both the airport express trains but also the regular trains in the Oslo region. And over here you find the airport. The section between Oslo Central Station and the airport is a high speed line, although the section between Oslo Central Station and Lidestam is basically all underground. Apart from the airport express trains and the regular local trains, you also find long distance trains that will go to Donbass and to Trondheim and of course semi long distance trains that will go towards Lillehammer for example. These trains in the Oslo region what are still considered of being the regional trains for Oslo are even going to Gothenburg in Sweden. This is the second city of Sweden. I also have a trip report on that by the way. Back to the railway station of Oslo Airport Gardermoen. There are very clear departure screens for departing trains, both in the hallways but also at the moment you enter the platform. Apart from the airport express trains and the regular trains that do call at the airport, I also noted the airport express bus. <laughs> this was quite pricey. But in some occasional situations I can understand that the bus might be a little bit more convenient. Anyway, time to go to the ticket desk or the vending machine for tickets to buy my special airport express tickets. After checking the prices for these trains, 
I decided not to buy this special airport express train ticket all the way from Oslo airport to Oslo central station, but to Lillestrøm because the section between Lillestrøm and Oslo central station is mainly underground anyway. And I was having my interrail ticket already. So actually I don't need to buy a ticket, but it's just that this railway company fly docket doesn't accept interrail. And buying my ticket this way, I could save approximately 40 krona, what is more or less the same as 4 US dollar or 4 euro. I mean, it's not a big amount, but it's a little bit of money I can save to, well, invest in this channel for other trip reports, gear, etc. I just really want to point out, especially for those who don't like to travel by train because of price concern, that this train is really pricier than most other trains in Norway, except the Flamsbahn. There you pay more, but that scenery is absolutely stunning. I do have a trip report on the Flamsbahn as well, by the way. You can find it on this channel. Anyway, after I bought my special ticket, I went to the platform. The platforms 2 and 3 are the special arrival and departure platforms for these airport express trains. Over here there's also a small convenience store and you find gates to these platforms. I haven't seen a lot of railway stations in Norway with gates, actually this is the only railway station I noticed. And the only platforms where you will find access gates or the platforms where you find these airport express trains. The other platforms are like normal in Norway. These airport express trains do run very frequent, every 10 minutes, what is quite impressive. I mean, you pay more, but you also get more service. The other trains do run a little bit less frequent. Of course, special departure screens at the platform do host the information about the first upcoming departures. And in this area, it's only for the airport express trains. And of course, at the platform, right above the platform, you also find departure information on screens. And over here, you can also see something like a composition of the train. So you know more or less what area of the train will stop where at the platform. The composition screen will refer to letters you can find at the platform. For example, the letter C, you can see over here. Anyway, time to go to my train, the flight target. And this is officially the fastest train in Norway. Well, actually they go on the highest speed. The infrastructure is officially built for 250 km per hour and the top speed for these trains is 210 km per hour. For these trains you only find one class and it's not possible to reserve a seat. As a matter of fact, I don't actually like the layout of these trains, and especially because of the special luggage areas at the moment you enter these trains. I understand it's good because people travel with luggage on these trains. Within these trains, you won't find a dining car, but well, hey, let's do a seat tour. We have a reading light, wow, let it shine. And of course you find overhead luggage racks throughout the train. At the seat in front of me, at least for the airline style seats, I don't found a tray table and there's also no food rest or magazine holder. There's some safety information at the side, including some power plugs. Route information will be shown at screens at the end of the compartments and at the sides at some spots right under the luggage racks you will find line maps of these trains. You can see it right over here. There are special areas like for example a silent area and free Wi-Fi is available throughout the train. Flight Target is using Norwegian Railway Class 71 trains and they look very similar to the Norwegian Railway Class 73 trains. This here is a Norwegian Railway Class 73 train that I took on the route from Stavanger to Oslo via Kristiansand. These are also high speed trains but that route is obviously not a high speed track. However, these are tilting trains and because these are tilting trains they can go faster through curves and this way they can reduce the travel time. I do have a trip report on these trains as well and if it's not there yet just stay tuned. For now I'll show you some views from the train between Oslo airport and Oslo central station and while I do this I'll tell you a little bit why I started this channel. I started this YouTube channel to show you what it's like to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation. And there's a lot of criticism on focusing too much on individual carbon savings or encouraging people to cut their carbon footprint. And this is fair enough, given that too much of this takes away the focus from the fossil fuel companies who are fueling the climate crisis. 
However, the reality is, and especially when it comes to the aviation industry, the only way to reduce emissions is to reduce demand. We don't have a green plane waiting in the wings, and the aviation industry is one of the fastest growing sources of global carbon emissions. So although the aviation industry only makes up a relatively small fraction of the overall global carbon emissions right now, what is still a big chunk by the way, it is set to make up a much larger chunk of it if it's continuing the way it is right now. The problem is mainly being caused by private jets and leisure trips. So people flying multiple times per year for holidays rather than taking a plane to visit friends, family or for business. And even though flying for visiting friends, family or for business trip can be very different than flying for a weekend away, even then trains, ferries and buses can still be a great more sustainable alternative. Of course, we need policy introductions like frequent flyer levy, but we also need a massive shift in our social norms of away from frequent flying for holidays and when we choose to travel, to choose for the train, ferry or bus. By choosing to travel this way, you contribute to the social change. And this social change is not only in the way how we travel, but also in the way in what we eat and what we consume. For example, try to eat more vegan. And we don't have to be totally vegan and we don't have to avoid flying totally, but we just have to reduce this a lot. Because if we reduce the demand, we also reduce the supply. And this counts especially for the aviation industry. I can't say this enough. And by increasing the demand for trains, you also increase the supply for trains, so there might be more and better connections. Something I really want to highlight is that cruise holidays are one of the worst holidays possible in terms of carbon footprint. Even though the cruise industry is more likely to adopt new techniques faster to be less polluting, but they still have a very long way to go. And that industry is unfortunately also growing very rapidly. But like for every business, the only way to reduce the carbon footprint is to reduce demands. I also made some trip reports from and to Oslo railway station. And I have some comparisons on the plane, train and car for some of these routes. You can find it in those trip reports. But just a quick summary. Oslo Stavanger, you can travel 694 times by train to have the same carbon footprint as traveling one time by plane. Oslo Bergen, you can travel 798 times by train to have the same carbon footprint as one time by plane. And Oslo Gothenburg, you can travel 2000 times up and down by train to have the same carbon footprint as traveling one time by plane one way. For the section between Lillestrøm and Oslo Central Station, I took a local train, what was not the flight target as you can see over here, and I do have trip reports on these trains as well. There are different kinds of local trains though. For example, the train I entered in for this section of the route are not the most comfortable one, but they're okay for commuter trains to be honest. Anyway, those videos are linked in the description of this video. For now, I'll get back very briefly on how to travel to Oslo without flying, and especially from abroad. Let me start off with the ferry connections. From Oslo, there are overnight ferries to Kiel and the other way around. However, if I travel from Kiel to Oslo, I cannot make that on time if I'm leaving from the Netherlands, but the other way around, that's a perfect timing. There are also overnight ferries to Copenhagen, but Copenhagen is very doable by train as well. From Kristiansand in the south of Norway, what is also a very doable train ride from Oslo, you will find direct ferries towards the Netherlands and also ferries to the north of Denmark. Then you find train connections between Oslo and Stockholm, these are the Swedish high speed trains and from Stockholm you find lots of ferries towards Finland but also the Baltic states. The connection I personally like to use most is the train connection between Gothenburg in Sweden and Oslo in Norway 
In Gothenburg, you find a ferry, an overnight ferry, that is operating between Kiel in Germany and Gothenburg in Sweden. If I'm traveling to Norway, I think this is one of my favorite connections. I can make it if I leave from the Netherlands and I can just relax. I can travel and sleep at the same time because it's an overnight ferry. Even a better connection after a long day working in the Netherlands is the ferry connection between Travemünde, what is just outside of Lübeck in northern Germany, to Malmö or Trelleborg. There are several sailings per day and the latest one, I can even catch this after a full day of working in the Netherlands. From Malmö there are hourly trains to Gothenburg, at least one train per hour. And actually these are the trains that do operate between Gothenburg and Copenhagen. From Copenhagen you also find trains to Germany. And there are also sleeper trains operating between Sweden and Germany via Denmark. There are just so many possibilities when it comes to not flying. Another thing where I also made a trip report on is for example the connection Trelleborg, what is just below Malmö, to Rostock in Germany. From Rostock you have a good connection on trains to Berlin for example. Well, there are really some of these connections I want to make a trip report on. So if you are interested in that, just stay tuned on this channel. It might take a while before I covered all of this. I think that's actually impossible to do so. But it will be there eventually, at least some of them. Before I end up this video, I want to tell you something about this Norway trip in general. Because this trip is a part of a greater journey, where I travel by train from the Netherlands to Kiel in northern Germany, from where on I took an overnight ferry to Gothenburg in Sweden and continued my way by train to Oslo. I took Norway's fastest train, but also the train that goes on the highest altitude in all of Northern Europe. I traveled by bus and boat towards Flam from where on I took the famous Flamsbana. This is the steepest railway in the world that is not using a cogwheel. And of course, I also travel with more local trains. This all to show you what it's like to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation and to lower your carbon footprint while traveling. I even took a bus that went on some ferries. And for the last train ride, I took a train that called at Norway's most southern railway station. From the town of Kristiansand in the south of Norway, I took a ferry back homebound towards the Netherlands. And of course, I made trip reports on all of this. And if the videos are not there yet, just stay tuned, they will be there soon. I hope you liked this video. If you did so, give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button. See you on the next video. Once again, thank you for watching. If you are interested in other trip reports, of course you can find them on this channel and you can always subscribe. I upload in general weekly trip reports. If you don't want to miss anything, hit the bell icon. But if you want to know more about specific videos, in the description of this video you find a map and on this map you find all videos.